Good evening, my dear brethren. It's good to see you again tonight as you have gathered together for another house to house. Across the city, different people are coming together for our routine and regular weekly house to house. I want to encourage you, if some of your friends who you know are not a part of this house to house program, please invite them. There's no point a few of us coming together and having a good time. We enjoy the fellowship, we enjoy the food, and then we walk away. And then while others are not participating, our growth uh, trajectory and our growth development will not be the same. Some people will be growing while some are not growing, okay? So now let's go on to today's teaching. Before we do that, let us pray briefly. Father, we thank you tonight for your faithfulness. We thank you because you're a good God. Thank you for what you've done for us through the week. Lord, we've gathered again together. We pray your presence, we pray your anointing, and we pray your spirit, Father, to invade this place today as we fellowship together and bless all the meals that we shall be eating. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I have been talking about associations, the importance of associations, how associations can bless you and how associations can curse you. The people you keep company with can be a blessing, and the people you keep company with can be a curse. They can handicap your growth and your development through life. Now, today, we are going to be having a very interesting Bible study, and there are questions that we are going to be looking at. But let me read for you again Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man, Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way in the path of sinners, or in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Look at that. You are blessed if you are not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. You are blessed if you are not walking. So let's flip that. You are blessed when you are walking in the counsel of the godly. That's when you are blessed. There are two counsels in life, or three counsels. There is a bad counsel, there is a good counsel, and there is a godly counsel. The Bible says that you are blessed if your association is with the godly. And then number two, it says that if you do not stand in the path of sinners, you are blessed if you do not stand in the path of sinners. So let's flip that. It means that you are blessed when you stand in the path of the righteous. You are blessed when you stand in the path of the righteous. And I want you to look at your associations, your relationships, whether these people are sinners, whether these people are ungodly. Number three, it says that you are, if you, you are blessed when you do not sit in the seat of the scornful. So that means the seat of the scornful, and I've told you, the seat of the mockers, and that is prevalent and perversive in this present generation and in our culture today. People trivialize serious matters. People don't think that godliness or spiritual values or spiritual matters are of great significance or any significance at all. So they make fun of them. They trivialize them. They treat them lightly, lightly and because they think that there are no consequences. But the Bible says if that is your lifestyle, you are not going to be blessed. If you sit with a man, you sit in the seat of the scornful. People who are mockers, people who, who, who make fun of the things of God, they say you're not going to be blessed. So you are blessed when you sit with the people who are serious-minded, people who take the Bible seriously, who take God seriously. Now, now, why are this important? When you are creating associations or you are developing associations or you are working with people, it's important for you to know how you choose these people. It's important for you to know how you interact with these people and how you create boundaries with the ungodly, how you create boundaries with the scornful, how you create boundaries with the sinners. Because when you don't create those boundaries, what happens is that everybody sees you as the same. And like the saying goes, birds of the same feather flock together. So it's important, my dear friends, when you want to choose association, number one, you want to find out, are they ungodly? Are they ungodly people? Are these people ungodly? Number two, are they wicked? Are they sinners? What the Bible calls sinners. Now, sinners, no, remember, the Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the standard of God. But these are people who have made sinning a habit. They don't care about the posture or the, the stipulations of scriptures. They have just made sinning a habit. And number three, are they the scornful? So you want to choose. When you choose this, you want to choose, you want to 
ignore, you want to avoid this kind of people. So, and sometimes, how do you do it? You take it to God in prayer. God, give me the grace in order not to be associated with this kind of people. Now, in your offices, you don't have a choice. You will work with people who fall into these three categories. You work with them because that's required. You cannot go out here now and divide the world into two categories. And these are sinners, these are not sinners, these are wicked, these are godly, these are ungodly. And then you choose the people to work with. No, you're going to work with all of those people. But how do you work with them in a way that you do not intermingle with them? So that means you are going to depend on God for prayers. You are going to depend on God for grace. You're going to pray to him. And you need to continuously and consistently read your Bible so that you have that strength of character when you interact with them in order to walk away. Now, when we look at the story of the children of Israel, when they sold their brother Joseph, what was their problem? Joseph was not an ungodly person. Joseph was not a sinner. Joseph was not a scornful. But they sold him away to slavery. And guess what? They sold him away, you, you know, uh, just like uh, selling a, a piece of furniture or selling a domesticated animal. They sold him away. But look at what happened when Potiphar, Potiphar saw the same Joseph. They sold their brother away. He was not ungodly. He was not a sinner. He was not scornful. But they sold him away. Why did they sell him in sl to slavery? Why did they sell him to the Ishmaelites, to the Midianites? That is part of what we are going to be discussing tonight. I would like you to ponder and dig deep into why they sold him. But look at what happened. When Potiphar saw this man who was discarded, who was uh, abandoned, who was rejected by his family members, he took him on. He invited him into his business, invited him into his life, and Joseph turned the trajectory of Potiphar's business around. What are the lessons there for us to learn tonight as we begin to go into our study and our conversation? What are the things you have seen in people? Or have you refused to see the value in an individual who is supposed to be a blessing to you? Because of envy? Because of anger? because of malice, or because of the, the conversations and the support of other people who hate them. You know, one of the things I learned growing up as a kid is that you do not make, you do not inherit another person's enemies. There are some of you who are rejecting your helpers. Why? Because they are the enemies of your friend, enemies, so to speak. So what are the things that Potiphar saw that the brothers did not see? And for you as a person... How can you avoid making the same mistakes where you disregard or you reject a helper who is supposed to be beneficial to you in your life? And some of the places where you have put your confidence, what happens, you see, you, you get disadvantaged. And then the third thing I want us to discuss today is the fact that what the Bible says that when the people in Jerusalem saw the, the apostles, they noticed that they had been with Jesus. So... The person you keep company with will impact your life and become your public relation officer. Why? Because the characteristics, the traits that you develop by being in company with that person will show itself, it will manifest, and people are going to see those traits in you. Potiphar benefited from that interaction with Joseph because when his business turned around, I'm sure his colleagues and his friends were asking him, what has happened? He benefited from that. And the, the people of Jerusalem, even though they would not acknowledge the usefulness of the disciples, but they saw that something different has happened. So my dear friends, as we go into our conversation today, I want to ask you, have you missed out a great opportunity by virtue of the person who ought to be a blessing in your life, in your office, a networking relationship or a partner in business or a family member or even in our local church, you threw that away. Have you missed that? We're going to have a deeper conversation this evening and I pray that God will enlighten us and bless us as we talk deeply and frankly. God bless you, my dear friends. Thank you, Father, as we go on into this study. Lord, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.